Revolution Radio proudly presents, live from the heart of the Blue Ridge, Roanoke, Virginia, it's the Just Bernard Show with host Bernard Alvarez. Join Bernard as he shares topics that reveal the real matrix and empower your human experience, including world liberty, the esoteric, suppressed technologies, spiritual ascension, and human consciousness. Humanity has awakened, and our time has come to realize our full potential. And now, live from the Star City, your host, Bernard Alvarez. And hello, everybody, and welcome to another segment of The Just Bernard Show here on Revolution Radio. I am Bernard Alvarez, and today we've got a different type of show for you. Uh, Let's say it's – well, we'll get into that in just a second, but let me first uh, welcome our assistant director, Trevor Knott, is joining us live from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Hi, Trevor. How are you? Hello. I am doing well. How about you? Very good. Very good. Thank you so much. And uh, just so everybody knows, Trevor will be manning the chat for us. So um, by all means, uh, go ahead and post your questions today. And that's what uh, today's show is going to be about. I, uh, as, as you uh, regular listeners know, uh, we normally do a two-hour interview with a very special guest on a one particular topic, or we discuss several topics with that particular guest. And today I felt, you know, I, I always have to talk about other people. Today I want to talk about what I feel like talking about. So we're going to spend the next two hours with uh, me covering different topics, uh, discussing my thoughts, my ideas on, um, you know, world events, uh, metaphysics, consciousness, the activist movement, the truth movement, anonymous, and just everything that we cover here on the Just Bernard Show and at the GIC. So with that being said, I welcome everybody in the chat room. It's great to have you here. Hello, everybody. Uh, Please, by all means, uh, go ahead and post any questions anytime you feel like it. And Trevor will make sure I have them. Uh, The first thing that I want to cover, uh, first of all, is um, the uh, Brazil uprising last night. Well, it didn't start last night, and that's the thing I, I don't think uh, many people understand that even though it's gotten a lot of attention in the last 24 hours, it started about a week or so ago. And as with uh, the Turkish uprising, it started with one particular you know, thing that got everybody motivated to speak up and then escalated into something much, much larger. Uh, Last night, uh, Brazil saw protests, huge protests, Uh, no matter what the mainstream media is saying, like the BBC, which are one of the few that actually covered it in mainstream. But we're talking hundreds of thousands of people uh, in Sao Paulo, Brasilia, um, Rio de Janeiro, and a couple other places as well. I don't know if you saw the images of them marching across the bridge. That was pretty impressive. But... um, Needless to say, there's a lot of issues going on. Uh, we can – we well, I don't even know where to start. The Belamonte Dam Project, which has displaced uh, the indigenous people of the Amazon. People are very upset about that. Uh, the World Cup and uh, the Olympics coming to Rio is displacing not only the homeless, but uh, they actually were – I believe – I don't know if they followed through, but they closed the indigenous center there because they wanted to build the Olympic Village or something like that there. And, you know, I might cut my, my wires crossed here, so if anyone uh, can correct me on these uh, notes, let me know. But, um, again, you know, we see it happening all, all around the world all the time. Every time the World Cup comes along or the Olympics come along, you know, I can't help but feel, and, and it really, it's very frustrating. It's very frustrating uh, as someone observing uh, the actions of the local governments when uh, events like this take place, uh, you know, it kind of makes, well, if anything, it's a very good example of the elite 
thinking the uh, the world is their playground and oh we're going to go over there and have a big party and, and celebrate you know whether it be the World Cup or the Olympics and they're going to take over for a little while and if you're lucky you might be able to get a job and work for them at a hot dog stand or something and make a few extra dollars selling t-shirts or whatever the latest craze would be for the particular event but uh, and then they leave and 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 of course it really does never change the local economy it ends up displacing you know thousands of people and uh, you know enraging a lot of the local residents and you know again this is only one of the aspects i know brazil has their own um you know their own political struggles that they're dealing with and again it could be anything from the indigenous to world cup uh we know that it started with um the the hike the the rate hike in uh in public transportation that was uh, the initial and uh it's funny because you're seeing all the mainstream media oh all this over bus fare no 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 this is not about bus fare <laughs> this is bus fare was the final straw and these people have had it and you know who can blame them but you know it's not just brazil this is happening all over the world we're seeing it all over the world the everywhere from greece to turkey spain united states canada um, Mexico, throughout South America, it's not, I think it's fair to say, you know, and I say it all the time, the world is awakening, the world is awakening, we are ready for this new shift, this new way of living, and uh, we are going through the process right now, and we're going to keep seeing uh, a lot of this, and, and, you know, the most important thing I can say to anybody is really... If you want to get the real news, don't bother with CNN. Don't bother with B, you know BBC or whatnot. You you need to go on Twitter. You need to go on Facebook. You need to find the local live streaming uh, journalist that's on the ground there, showing what's really happening. Already today, I'm seeing uh, the, the numbers being reduced way lower than what they really are of what happened in Brazil. We're already seeing the news focusing on that one burning car in Rio. It was like, oh, look, they burned a car. You know, well, meanwhile, there's hundreds of thousands of people upset and, and trying to get the world's attention. And, you know, with, with this, I, I got to tell you, I, I support humanity. I support humanity and I support truth and I support uh, solidarity with all these people that are speaking up against a corrupt, uh, a corrupt system. It's not even about their local government. This is about a global corrupt system that people have just had enough. Now, I've already gotten a, a few, uh, you know, the, the metaphysical light worker community is writing me, oh, but we don't want to have the last straw. You know, we, we can do this transition smoothly and la, 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 and love, 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 love. Yes, of course, we can do it with love. Yes, we can do it by changing the way that we think about the world. We can change the inside to change the outside, but at the same time, we've got to change the outside as well. Uh, people, this is a part of the birthing process, and no one is really going to know the details and the extent of how quickly things are going to change, how it's going to change. We all just know something is happening, something is changing, and um, if it, you know, if anything, I'm so happy to see people just saying enough is enough and keeping it nonviolent. It's, it's you know, wonderful. If you watch any of the um, the live streams yesterday, uh, we were lucky enough to get a link from um, Anonymous Brazil was on the ground and uh, they had like three or four streams going and um, <clears throat> you can see everyone screaming not violent, well in Portuguese, screaming not violent, no violence, no violence, no violence and um, you know, it just goes to show you the different mentality of uh, the, the forces that are at play here. You know, we are... Those of us that want change, we want peaceful change. We don't want to see a revolution, well, a bloody revolution. We don't want to see, uh, you know, buildings being burnt down or, or the military getting involved in, you know, mass killings or anything like that. We want to see that we are speaking up, that we're allowed to speak up, and that we're allowed to create change uh, as, as, as a consensus, as a group of people. Now... We're already seeing, of course, we saw it in Turkey, we see it in Brazil. Uh, the police are fighting back, they're getting violent. Uh, there's been uh, multiple police brutality, and the, unfortunately this is happening all over the world um, with most of the uprisings we're seeing. Uh, right now we're getting ready to go um, 
uh, we're getting ready to start the uh, the what is it? The G8, I believe, is in Northern Ireland. Uh, whether I, I think it's this weekend, but you know, who knows what that's going to bring out as far as like protesters or information. If there is any information that comes out, you know, we just had uh, Bilderberg last week. So there's definitely – there's like this like speeding up intensity of, of, uh, of a boiling point happening on the planet right now. <clears throat> and, you know, again, we don't know where it's going. We just know that uh, there is change and there needs to be change. And uh, I, I support peace. I support nonviolence. And I believe that we can uh, create change on the planet with, um, with uh, these types of uh, demonstrations and especially, especially um, turning our back on the uh, turning our back on the not not I don't want to say the authority, <clears throat> but the idea of authority, the idea that the system is in control. Uh, by turning our back on this and saying, you know what, this is not the system I want to be a part of. Let's create a better one. Uh, mm-hmm. We're going to see more change, and we're seeing it now in communities. We're seeing it, you know, not not only on online communities. We're seeing it on the ground. We're seeing. Uh, intentional communities being built, uh, more and more co-ops, uh, things of that nature seem to be happening a lot more, and uh, it's a part. It's a part of the role we need to play in this. You know, I posted yesterday that uh, you know one person can change the world, but we'll change it a lot quicker if we're working together. And um, I think it's a wonderful thing. Uh, social media has been very helpful. It's been a great tool. Uh, whatever anybody thinks about the internet, whatever anybody thinks about technology, the one positive aspect about all of this is that uh, the social media and the internet has been uh, giving us the ability to connect with people from all around the planet and to to learn from one another. You know that was um, that is the main reason why we started uh, the Global Illumination Council uh, uh, platform. Uh, we saw a need. Not only did we see a need, we knew, we felt inside that people were awakening not only on a political uh, scale but also on a spiritual and internal scale, and we needed to find each other. You know, uh, before Facebook got popular, we started our we started working. God, it's going to be our anniversary in July. It'll be, I believe, it'll be seven years we've been doing this. Yeah, it'll be seven years. And um, and we've been on the radio for seven years on the internet, uh, starting in July or August, I believe. <clears throat> but um, you know, we saw the need. We we saw that people needed to be able to reach each other, need to be able to to discern what was real, what wasn't real, to create some type of alternative media outlet, uh, and also to create a safe space to explore uh, these feelings that we were having. You know, so many people. Uh, especially here in the United States, you know, if you're not working the nine to five job, if you're not, you know, uh, being a part of your neighborhood uh, association, you know, the whole suburbanite mentality, or as I call the bourgeoisie mentality, then you're looked at like you're you're stepping out of line and there's something wrong with you. And we get a lot of that where people are like, well, if my family knew that I was an independent, you know, or an anarchist or a libertarian, you know, they would like shun me. And we hear so many stories of that. You know, we we hear of, of stories of people being shunned for for practicing meditation or or things like that. So it, it was a very it is still very, very important to me. Uh, that we have places like Global Illumination Council and, of course, Revolution Radio and all of the other wonderful alternative communities that are out there providing these types of resources for people like ourselves uh, to connect and to learn from one another. Uh, it's a shame that, you know, we are seeing – some of them are – we're seeing some shut down when we see new ones uh, pop up. Uh, the good news is is that we are seeing uh, what was maybe a hundred seven years ago we 're seeing a thousand ten thousand um, sites and and resources that we can turn to now and and it takes it takes a lot of guts to do uh, you know what we do here at Revolution Radio and what we do at the global illumination council it 's not an easy undertaking it 's a lot a lot of work and you're you 're constantly uh, going against the grain. And uh, I don't want to say going against the grain. Let's just say we're going with what we feel, and we're not concerned about the grain. It's a better way of saying it. And it takes a lot. It takes a lot of courage to not care about the grain or going with uh, uh, with the uh, ideas of society. You know, 
uh, so many people are are, are against um, something. You know, everyone's got something to complain about. But as for for me, it's all about keeping my eye on the prize. And the eye, the prize for me, is a transformed humanity. The prize for me is a humanity that can live in peace, that lives in cooperation, that lives with uh, real justice for each other, real security. Uh, for each other. I mean, as far as the details and how they're going to play out, I, you know, who knows what the details are going to be? Will there be money? Maybe there won't even be money. You know, it might be a whole world of cooperation and um, and uh, and sharing our skills, sharing our knowledge, of a world of bartering. Who knows? Uh, many of us are already doing it. I know I do a lot of my um, my living is through bartering, bartering uh, services and goods and. What not trying to stay away from the mainstream uh, paradigm? Many people are going off grid, you know. So, will there be a grid? Maybe, maybe there'll be money. Maybe there won't be. But as far as the details are concerned, that's not that's not my concern. As long as we remain in the integrity of truth and in the integrity of equality and in the integrity of peace and nonviolence, that is what the most important thing is for me. Uh, I believe that uh, again. You know, just keeping our eye on the prize. Where let the cards fall where they fall. Just keep your eye on the prize. Keep working toward sharing clarity. Keep working toward sharing truth. Keep working on helping people that are reaching out for answers and resources. Um, you know, so many people are are just trying trying to find information. And uh, when they find it, they're just so grateful. I know I was when I first started this uh, journey, the social networking journey. <laughs> and to, just to have the information uh, out there as far as uh, whether it be esoteric or political or, or whatnot was a very – is still a very, very big deal. Um, you know, information should be free. However, you know, labor is labor, it, and it, it takes a lot of work to do what we do. That's why Revolution Radio asks for donations. That's why – the Global Illumination Council and myself asked for donations. We are we are living this. We it takes a lot of work and we have bills to pay, unfortunately. So in the middle of the transition, let's not forget that that there are many many people out there uh, that are really working their their butts off, and uh, you know who they are, and you see them on all the radio shows, you see them working on Facebook and their websites twenty four seven, growing, sharing. Uh, explaining and and just giving their love and their light to the entire planet and answering, you know, geez, we go through, well, I don't go through the email as much as I should, but let's just say that I'm I'm answering at least uh, five to ten emails a a day, Uh, and that goes, you know, that takes several hours to do as well as uh, our day-to-day work. So that connection is important, and it takes up a lot of time, but it is, it is the number one priority. We have to keep connected. We have to keep this discussion moving forward and moving in the direction of understanding and, 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 and clarity. Again, I love that word clarity, clearing that cobweb mentality, uh, clearing the illusion, clearing the, the whole idea – that everything is going to be one way or the other. No, we don't know. We don't know. We can only be guided. We can only be guided by where our gut is telling us to go. For some people, I, you know, I, I get into debates all the time with people saying, well, you don't focus enough on chemtrails or you don't focus enough on veganism and, and, and uh, factory farming or you don't focus enough on this. You know what? There's a lot of issues out there, and that if that is where your gut is telling you to go, if your gut is telling you to be vegan and just evangelize all over the place, if your gut is telling you to talk, talk about stopping chemtrails or GMOs or um, you know the New World Order, whatever it is that your gut is telling you, then that's where you should be. It's all a part of the process. Nobody is wrong. I think the only part that we that we do get into a situation is when we think the other person is wrong for not thinking or being as dedicated as we are to one particular issue when there is issue upon issue upon issue. Can we figure out what that one issue is? I, I put that question out to all of you. If there was the one issue, the one issue that we could all focus on to help 
us get into that that you know as Kathy Bilsky here on Revolution Radio says that quantum leap that that quantum leap moment if we could just take care of and either get rid of or create this issue what would that issue be is it the banks is it, and please don't say the Illuminati and the New World Order because that's you know we all know that has twenty tentacles and thirty different layers and understandings and definitions. Is it the economy? Is it the uh, in, uh, military industrial complex? Is it consciousness? Is it about us going inside of ourselves and changing the way that we think? If is there is there one issue? What is the one issue that we all could focus on to really push the planet through that quantum leap stage into the next level? So I'm going to put that out there and see if anybody actually responds. Trevor, keep an eye on the chat and see if anybody yes, says anything. Um, if, if, you know, what you said, you know, if every activist, I guess, picks their issue and each one of those issues is going to be a different issue issue and if we get enough people to do that then all the issues will be taken care of <laughs> dealt with yeah see we can't have everyone just like all the activists and light workers focusing on one thing then it just doesn't work that way i i like that answer <clears throat> that's a good answer um so, so what do you guys think uh, out there, and everybody that's listening? And if you happen to hear the archive, I'd love to hear uh, your answers in the comments also uh, below the uh, the player uh, when you listen to the archive, because I feel this is a very good discussion, and uh, it, you know we have to. I mean, really hold each other up for what we're doing, no matter what it is. Now, I mean, you know, a lot of people ask me, what's my one message? What is my one message? My one message is to get everybody to do something. My one message is that it, just like what Trevor says, it's a little bit of everything. Uh, we, that's why we created the GIC platform. We have groups on there for chemtrails. We have groups on there for um, uh uh, uh, you know, um, geez, uh, food integrity, GMO. We have groups on there for consciousness and meditation. We have groups on there for UFO disclosure. I, it's all a little bit of everything, uh, just like Trevor said. Uh, for me, it's about really, again, being honest with yourself, following what your gut is telling you, being able to pull the, you know, the cobwebs, you know, from the attic of your mind, <laughs> from the corners of the attic of your mind. I forgot who said that. But um, to and, and get beyond the cognitive dissonance, and I, it's one of my favorite terms right now because, uh, you know, a great example. Here, you know, we all grew up. Here's a, an easy example: Disney World. How many people went to Disney World when they were a kid? I mean, I grew up. I loved going to Disney World. I I remember in my twenties in college, we used to go to Disney World and do psychedelics. You know, it was just a great place. You know, everyone loved Disney World. We all grew up with the Disney World cartoons and the TV shows and the Mickey Mouse Club. But yet, here we are. And 2013, and Disney is one of the most corrupt, evil, filthy, disgusting corporations out there. Uh, using manipulation through PR, buying up everything like a giant monster, uh, treating their employees horribly. You know, so then we have that that cognitive dissonance of, oh, but I love Disney. You know, I love the It's a Small World ride, or I love Pirates of the Caribbean. I love Johnny Depp. It's Disney. It's Disney. What are they doing? What are they doing to make the planet a better place? So there comes that point where, and it, it was hard for me, because it is for everybody to say, I cannot support this anymore. I'm not going to support them. I'm not going to go on vacation over there and, you know, or go to their movies or, or anything like this. Why do I want to support something like that? But again, there's that inner, there's that inner, um, that inner turmoil of, you know, oh, but, you know, they, my kids grew up with that and all those happy memories of childhood and, you know, all of these things. And, you know, and, and it is, it, it really is a fantasy world when you go on vacation there. <laughs> but, um, the reality of it is, is that it, it, we just cannot, if you really are listening to your heart, if you really are someone who wants to see change and feels the change happening within you, 
we with that whole little inner conflict thing is you know what we got to give stuff up we got to give ideals up we got to give nostalgia up we've got to move into that place of of cognitive alignment of cognitive alignment with who we truly are i mean now granted in in some cases a great example is um eating healthy it's very difficult to eat healthy on a budget i'm on a very very strict budget i cannot spend five hundred dollars a month per person to eat purely organic or grain fed or raw milk or you know all of these things and 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 doing what i do for gic working 80 plus hours a week it's impossible for me to grow my own food everyone's like oh well grow a garden i can't i don't have time oh well then just buy organic i can't i can't afford it well that creates cognitive dissonance it really does i can't stand some of the food i eat i can't I sit there and I look at it. To me, a treat is that organic grain-fed, you know, $15 chicken (laughs) versus the $5 Purdue chicken, you know. So it's like, oh, this is a real treat. I get to eat healthy today. But um, we we get that cognitive dissonance in many aspects of our lives, whether it be food, whether it be economy, whether it be uh, the the shops that we go shopping at, uh, the media that we have. I mean, I have cognitive dissonance just being on Facebook, knowing how, you know, disgustingly corrupt and and whatnot. But it's a tool. I keep telling myself it's a tool. And um, one of the things that I talk about a lot, and we'll talk about more about it after the uh, the break coming up here in a moment, is um, one, of course, aligning with our true self, aligning with our, 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 our cognitive alignment with who we truly are. And then, of course, there's harm reduction. Uh, we're not going to live in a world where we're not going to breathe chemicals. Uh, there is nowhere that you're not going to have to. I mean, unless you are not connected to the mainstream in any sense or form, you're completely off the grid. You still have to work for a living to an extent. You still have to pay rent. You still have to pay electric. You still have to pay for phone, cable, internet, whatever it is. I'm, people like me don't have a television, so cable goes uh, out the window. However, sometimes you're going to be doing things that are just not in alignment with who you are as, uh, as, as a new human, as a new human in this new world and in this new uh, paradigm that seems to be uh, unfolding. So we're going to talk about harm reduction and learning how to, uh, learning how to maneuver uh, through this uh, this tangled web that the, the system has created for ourselves, and uh, of course we're going to be covering topics uh, everything from consciousness to uh, well, we might get into some UFO talk here later on, disclosure talk and uh, channeling, whatever it is. We'll see. Like I said, today's show is me talking about what I feel like talking about. <laughs> Now, back to your host, Bernard Alvarez. Yeah, welcome back. That was a quick break. I love that one. Um, anyway, so we were, um, again, let me just welcome everybody back to the Just Bernard Show here on Revolution Radio. My name is Bernard Alvarez, and today is the I Want to Talk About What I Feel Like Talking About show. Uh, Of course, I'll be taking your questions and uh, be happy to answer them if something strikes a chord or uh, something that that you would like to comment on. Please, by all means, join us here in the chat room. I'll be happy to answer your questions. Uh, It's kind of an open forum talk today, and uh, I'm enjoying it. It's nice not to have... um, uh, not to be worried about the next question. <laughs> As a host who uh, is always doing interviews, it's always, uh, you know, what's the next question, you know. Uh, but today it's more about what do I feel like talking about, and I enjoy this. So we were talking about um, this whole, how shall we say, the tangled web of our society. Um, you know, and, and I, for me, and this is just for me, ideally, ideally, I would be living in, uh, let's say, in the woods somewhere, uh, with a you know a reasonable size, you know, cabin or or uh, earth ship, you know, off grid, you know, maybe generating water from a river, 
uh, growing my own food, uh, growing and hunting for my own meat if I decided I still wanted to eat meat, uh, growing my own healing herbs, uh, living in a community where people are sharing and supporting one another. Um, you know, let's say uh, in my cabin in the woods, this is, again, this is just my dream. My cabin in the woods, uh, half an acre or half a mile away is another home and they they make clothes, you know, and I share my I share my my crops with them because I like to grow things and they like to knit and, you know, they shear their sheep and make sweaters and whatnot. To me, that is the ideal for me now. Is there technology in this fantasy world that I'm creating here? Yeah, I, I we're generating a, an, an in, a intranet, not an internet, but an intranet with those of like mind, and uh, our servers are placed throughout our communities where, where we're all connecting and sharing information and whatnot, and still getting the you know we all like distraction, of course. You know, I got my own little things that I, I have my Netflix and whatnot. We all like distraction once in a while. And we, there's nothing wrong with that once in a while. Uh, diversions is more the word I'm looking for. But so, yeah, in this fantasy world, uh, there's no harsh chemicals clean, for cleaning. Uh, we're all using, well, I don't know, apple cider vinegar to clean our floors. You know, we're all using a non-toxic uh, uh, dryer sheets and, and we're not uh, using a toxic carpet spray, you know, with uh, stain resistant, you know, fumes and whatnot. And of course, there's no um, insecticide on the crops. Well, and again, this is the fantasy world. This is what I, what I would find ideal for me. Is that the way I'm living now? No. Is that the way many of us are living now? No. Uh, is it the way that many of us want to live? Yeah, yeah. We're all doing a little bit towards that. And this is where I, what I call harm reduction comes in. Trying to do the best we can with what we have. Now, the idea of harm reduction, of course, would be for me, and again, I'm just going to talk about for me. For me, it's not eating processed foods. Uh, it's reading labels. If if there's something I can't pronounce, I'm, I'm going to put it right back down. Now, on occasion, is there something that I really like that I'm just going to have? Yeah, I'm going to do it sparingly. I'll I'll have that you know Cuban sandwich with MSG once a month or something like that. But um, the reality of it is, is it's just a harm reduction. Um, using you know uh, soaps that are not. Uh, that are not going to hurt the environment. Uh, being careful what you put down the drain. A lot of people don't care what they put down the drain. Uh, recycling. I, I know everyone's like, yeah, that's so cliche. But you know what? It really does make a little bit of a difference. Not much, but it does. Uh, I know a lot of the, the cities and whatnot, they profit from your recycling. But you know what? At least it's getting recycled. So go for that. Uh, getting fluoride out of our diets. And notice what I said, our diet. You can take fluoride out of your water, but it doesn't mean it's out of your diet. <laughs> Think about all the foods that you've eaten with water that is probably fluoridated. Uh, it could be sodas. It could be that that Hostess Twinkie. Well, no, Twinkies are gone, but, you know, the Hostess uh, Cupcake. You know, what water did they use in there? Uh, so we have to remember that the, the fluoride situation is not only in toothpaste or in the drinking water, it's also in our food. Uh, so, you know, being aware of a lot of, a lot of um, companies are now using uh, filtered water on, on their label, which I really like. It's like, ah, filtered water is the first ingredient. I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> or distilled water. And then they put the uh, aminos back in. I mean, the, um, uh, the antioxidants and the minerals back in. So, harm reduction, food, harm reduction in the sense of what we put into our bodies, of course, that's the number one thing. Uh, getting away from those 80,000 pills the doctor has prescribed you, uh, finding alternative methods uh, that, that are going to help you with that medically. Um, now, that's not to say that we can't have uh, mainstream medical situations where it's needed. An emergency room is an emergency room for a reason. But uh, unfortunately, many of us have become, how shall we say, uh, fallen into that victim mentality. I have this. I have that. I have uh, toxic. Uh, you know, wait, what's the word I'm looking for? Pro, uh, post-traumatic stress. You know, we all have post-traumatic stress, especially after 9-11. 
Uh, we all have uh, back aches. We, everyone's got fibromyalgia. Everyone's got autism. Everyone's got ADD. Everyone's got ADHD. Everyone's got anxiety. Everyone's got depression. Really? Really? Everyone's got 30 freaking things that they got to take 30 pills a day? I don't think so. I think that we've become allowed ourselves to start living in that victim mindset. Poor me. My my back hurts. I need that Oxycontin. Oh, uh, my, I, I'm nervous. I need to have 5,000 tranquilizers and an antidepressant. And the antidepressant doesn't work, so I'm going to get that new one that they told me to mix with the old one. You know, so these are, these are the things we're talking about with harm reduction, figuring out what it is that we can do to remove the toxicity in our lives. Wi-Fi, great example. Yesterday we just posted a really good video. Uh, we didn't produce it, but we, we did post it in an article uh, on the GIC.org about Wi-Fi radiation. And it's not just Wi-Fi. It's cell phones. It's cordless phones. It's your microwave. Uh, it's the smart meter. All of these things are causing radio frequency radiation to be a part of our daily life and to be around us all of the time. Uh, it freaked me out. I'm not going to say it freaked me out, but it, the video itself was enough for me to take action. And what I'm doing now is I am turning my computer off at the end of the night. When it's time to go, I, I just, I have, I, you know, we all have that uh, circuit uh, thingy, the, uh, geez, what's that called? Surge protector. Just click it off. Make sure your Wi-Fi and your broadband and all that is turned off at the end of the night. Uh, the power I, bar. Yeah, the power bar thing that everybody Yeah, has. I've, as long as I've had a computer, I've always turned it off at the end of the night, even if I go out like, like I turn it off. It's probably why you sleep better than I do. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I. You know what? And I got to tell you, Jeff Harvey ha has been saying that to me for over a year now, and I know you heard him say it on a couple of our shows when he's been on. And I was like, yeah, but I sleep on the other side of the room. I'm not going to worry too much about it. But uh, yeah, it it doesn't matter what side of the room. It doesn't matter if you're in the next room. It's in your house, and it goes and permeates through your entire house. So if you think about, I mean, you know, we got chemtrails, we've got polluted water, we've got polluted air, we've got EMF pollution, we've got uh, poisons in the food, poisons in our drinking water, poisons in our bathing water. Who thinks about bathing and 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 putting a filter on their shower head? Um, I know I do. Have I done anything about it? No. But I keep saying I am, and I think I need to do that next month. Um, I think Culligan offers one for like $25 or something like that. It's like, just go for it. Buy the shower filter already. Um, you're in that shower, in that steaming hot shower. You're getting all that copper, fluoride, chlorine, all that stuff going into your open pores. You know, harm reduction, harm reduction, just taking steps. No, we're never... Well, maybe not in this lifetime, but we will come back to a state of, of, of naturalness. We will eventually uh, learn how to – we'll be able to figure out the technology that is not going to cause radio frequency radiation, I, I promise you. As a matter of fact, we probably already have it, but it's probably cheaper for the manufacturers to do these uh, routers or whatnot. Uh, I've been seeing and hearing about uh, wireless electricity, and we all know about wireless electricity from Tesla. And uh, it, we spoke with someone a couple years ago. Uh, this wasn't here on the radio show, but it was uh, actually at one of the Occupy camps that I uh, was at. And some guy was working for some electrical company. I forgot what it was. And he saw us, you know, on standing in the park and, you know, waving our signs and whatnot. And he wanted to make a donation. So he literally pulled over the car, got out. And we started talking to him, and he was he works for I want to say General Electric, I want to say General Electric, and how they have developed wireless electricity now, where it's just this one little box you put in your house, and you and the device will just uh, you know just charge or whatever. We'll have an electrical charge to be able to work. Again, we all know about Tesla. He you know he developed that a long time ago, and I'm sure General Electric or whoever it is. It's probably coming up with the most profitable way of doing it. But what he was saying was, that unfortunately, that they were still concerned about the health risks involved. <laughs> so we got to be careful about these things. Um, uh, again, so I, I feel that having the common sense to know what is healthy, what is unhealthy, 
Uh, you know, it's kind of like everything in moderation. We talk about it with alcohol or cigarettes or marijuana or cannabis or whatever you want to call it uh, today. Everything in moderation. You know, I, I literally had a doctor that uh, told me to uh, have a couple shots of liquor a day. Literally, a doctor in South Florida. Now, granted, it was a third world doctor. But I had told him because when I was a kid, my family had put me on antidepressants and benzodiazepines. And I didn't want them in my body anymore when I started going through this this uh, awareness, this awakening. And he was like, just well, he basically said, drink a six-pack every day. It's the same thing as taking a Xanax. <laughs> now, I don't do that, but, you know, again, everything in moderation. Yeah, I'll do a shot of vodka or something like that at the end of the day just to relax and, and keep the anxiety level down. And in case you can't tell, I'm really high-strung and, and a hyper little crazy person sometimes, but um, it's part of the job that I do. Uh, you know, it, we there's a lot a lot writing on on the on the work and a lot of emotion uh dealing with uh you know these uprisings and whatnot and trying to remain centered um so again back to that that um uh harm reduction as well is as an activist as an activist we've got to know when to say enough I cannot watch that that video. I'm not going to watch that documentary. I got to walk away from Facebook. I got to turn off that radio station. I am getting wound up. I need to relax. And we need to know and understand when enough is enough. That's probably one of the most important things that we can do is stress or de-stress, I should say. Knowing when, um, you know, following a story. I know many of us go down, quote, unquote, the rabbit hole. We, we pick up on something, uh, whether it be chemtrails or the new pedophile ring in the Pentagon or something like that. And we're just getting all worked up, all worked up, all worked up. It's not good for you to be worked up 24-7. It really isn't. So we've got to know when to put on Hulu and watch that comedy show or, you know, turn on, put on Pandora and put on that new age relaxation station, you know, <laughs> Knowing when to meditate, knowing when it's time to just really take care of ourselves. And I say this from experience because I'm really bad at it. And I keep trying. I keep trying. I did it yesterday. And, of course, the Brazil thing happens. And it's like, oh, all that relaxation went out the window. You know, I treated myself to lunch. I had a relaxing afternoon. And then, of course, the, the journalist in me kicks in and I'm working till midnight. And... Uh, so again, it's about knowing when to say enough is enough. Um, you know, today I'm going to, after this radio show, I got a meeting and after that meeting, I'm taking the rest of the afternoon off because I'm tired. We got to know when we need to rejuvenate and when we need to, to really just take a break from it all. Again, harm reduction. So we covered food, we've covered water, <laughs> we've covered uh, EMF pollution, we've covered chemtrails. What about what about aesthetics? People don't think about this. Someone said to me, um, I can't believe you the way you live on the budget that you have. We have a very small budget. Okay, GIC has got an immensely small budget for what we do. <clears throat> but yet, I try to make sure I have a very pleasant uh, environment around me. Uh, there are people that say, oh, but I only make $500 a, month, a week. What do you mean only $500 a week? I could do a lot with $500 a week. <laughs> There's no reason why we need to allow ourselves to be in an ugly environment. There's nothing wrong with having nice things around you. And I don't mean nice like Tiffany lamps and chandeliers. I'm talking about a nice poster, a nice print, uh, a nice view out your window. You know, think about think about what you're looking at. What is going into your senses? Uh, what are you allowing into your senses? What are you seeing? What are you hearing? What are you smelling? You know, this is about our environment. This is about the aesthetics of our senses. And many of us do not pay attention to that. Uh, we allow ourselves to live in that ugly, dilapidated trailer in the middle of downtown. Or, or even if we do live in an ugly, dilapidated trailer in the middle of downtown, Put some nice wall hangings up. Go to the, the thrift store. Get some nice pillows. Uh, there's no reason why we need to be in an ugly environment. Uh, I don't care if you're, well, I mean, unless you're stuck working for a corporation, they're not going to let you put nice stuff up in your cubicle. But if you're someone like me that works at home, you know, uh, 
make your your desk face a certain way so you have a great view i have a great view of the mountain right outside my window um and and trust me i live in a very 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 cheap apartment but i've got a great view out the window um buy some nice things to put around you that you can look at something that makes you feel good whether it be family pictures something to that nature because the reality of it is harm reduction is stress reduction as well and by looking at things that make you feel good you're going to reduce that harm uh, many 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 uh doctors and or alternative healers uh will tell you that you get sick when the body is stressed out and we allow the the, the bacteria is within us the germs are within us. The illnesses are within us. Cancer might be within us. But it's when our body gets stressed and pushed to that point of weakness where that, you know, that particular uh, immunity just is no longer holding up is when we start getting sick. So for me, harm reduction also means having nice things around you, whether it be a nice picture, whether it be a, a dried flower arrangement, uh, pictures of your friends, uh, a good view out your window. And I remember, um, you know, I, I come from the big city. I come from South Florida and Miami. And I remember there was this big uh, alley. There was this alley with this big wall in front of my window uh, a few years back. And it was just a, like a, a cinder block, ugly, gray wall. And one of my friends said, just put a crawling vine on there. Let, them, let the vines grow up. It. And we did. And so when all I saw was this blanket of green when I looked out the window after, you know, six to eight months, it took some time. But then we had this beautiful, vault, you know, climbing vine uh, out there in the middle of the city in an ugly city. Because let me tell you, downtown Miami is ugly. But <laughs> it's um, you can create beauty around you everywhere and uh, having life around you and having nice things to look at and smell is very important. Uh, so, again, harm reduction. Uh, some of the things that um, that we like to talk about, especially around the GIC, is uh, our internal dialogue. And uh, I, I'm just going to talk a little bit about it before we go on the break. And that is, what are you saying to yourself throughout the day? Uh, I think a lot of us don't realize the way that we talk to ourselves. Uh, I noticed that last night, uh, I've been having insomnia for the last couple nights. And last night I decided, you know what, I'm going to try and experience, and I, I'm just going to let the thoughts flow and listen. And granted, it was a lot of gibberish that was going through my head. <laughs> I was like, where did that come from? Just weird uh, discussions that are going on in my head from just random you know, things. Maybe I was being empathic and picking up other conversations, but... I decided, you know, let me listen. And uh, it really made, it was a really, I don't want to use the term eye-opening because I was having insomnia, but the idea that it was an awareness thingy, like an aha moment of uh, how lax I had gotten in the language that was going on in my mind. How do you speak to yourself uh, throughout your day? If you're running behind, are you telling yourself you're running behind and are you thinking about the worst scenario? Uh, if you are late somewhere, again, running behind, are you freaking out over it? What are you telling yourself? If you break something in your home, how do you respond to it? If you see something that makes you feel uncomfortable, what are the words that your, that your mind says to you? Um, when you're alone, and this is a very important thing because, um, again, I was on this uh, experimental thing last night. I was like, you know what? I'm going to do that whole sensory deprivation thing. So I put on the blindfold. I put on earplugs and uh, just listened. And that's what I did. How many of us are comfortable with ourself by ourself? How many, are com how many of us are comfortable in our skin are we happy? Can we be alone? Um, do we have the ability to enjoy our presence uh, as an individual with just ourself? So again, uh, just making making an observation that the inner dialogue uh, is pretty much our reality. What you're thinking is what you're feeling. What you're feeling is is this moment. It's your day to day, moment to moment. Are you? Are you? If you're having a happy life, it's because you really are having happy thoughts. You know, quite honestly, and I know that's cliche. The whole law of attraction. You know, 
what you think you become. Yeah, I know that's been overdone, but it is a reality. It really is a reality. So let's think about the things that we're thinking about. Let's think about think about thinking. That's that's really good. No, what I mean is be aware of the thoughts that are going through your mind. What are they saying to you? What is the language that you're using uh, when your mind is on automatic pilot is what I'm trying to say. Uh, a lot of us have that negative record that just plays over, that scratchy old record <laughs> that just keeps playing over and over, broken records, skipping back to the same old track, saying the same old thing. You're not getting anywhere. You're, you know, you've let your family down. You're not helping the planet. You're wasting time. You're ugly. You're fat. You're old. You're young. You're stupid. You're too smart. You're too much of a geek. You're too pretty. You know, all of these things, all of this like broken record uh, mentality and consciousness that moves through us on a day-to-day, moment-to-moment is uh, something that many of us do not think about. So I would like to ask you, what is the number one thought that you notice? Just take a moment. Take a moment right now. Just be quiet. And what's the first thing that starts popping up in your head? Besides this guy on the radio is crazy. But... (laughs) This guy on the radio is awesome. What what are you talking about? (laughs) Take a moment. Think about the last time you talked to yourself in your mind or thinking out loud. I call it thinking out loud. If you did talk to yourself, because I catch myself thinking out loud quite a bit. And, And I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you. One of the things that made me focus on this about a year or so ago, and I, I, I've talked about this before for those of you that, um, listen to the show regularly uh i remember i forgot what it was i think i broke a glass oh yeah i I break glass all the time that's why i have plastic in the house but (laughs) i'm doing i'm doing the dishes and i had this really nice margarita glass that someone had given me and i'm washing the dishes and i break the glass and out i said it out loud you idiot you idiot and i said it with that tone you idiot I was like, how dare I talk to me like that? I don't want other people to talk to me like that. Why am I talking to myself like that? But again, just an awareness of, of the language that we use with ourselves can be very, very helpful. Um, you know, harm reduction, going back to that whole thing about harm reduction, and even just taking it back to uh, the beginning of today's show when we were talking about being true to who we are. How can we be true to create change on the planet if we're still using the techniques that the elites use to keep us oppressed? What do they use? Ridicule. What do they use? Criticism. What do they use? Making us feel, feel fearful, making us feel insecure about where we're going, what we're doing, and trying to discredit us. We don't need to do it to ourselves. We have a whole system that will do it for us. So it's time for us to start taking responsibility for the way... And now, back to your host, Bernard Alvarez. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Just Bernard Show here on Revolution Radio. Today is a very special day for me because I just get to talk about whatever is on my mind. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's nice. It feels really good. <laughs> let, me, um, let me ask Trevor, what do you think so far? How are we doing? I love it. It's really, 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 really nice change. <laughs> Very cool. And to all those of you in the chat room, I, I, by all means, you're more than welcome to ask me anything. Uh, I look forward to uh, any uh, topics that might be posted. However, um, uh, during this uh, this segment, I figured you know a lot of people. I've noticed. I've noticed, uh, and and this happened just last night actually. Uh, someone was interested uh, in in blogging or writing and 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 uh, being a correspondent for somebody, and I said, well, what about uh, helping us out at the GIC, the Global Illumination Council? She's like, I thought you were just a radio show, and uh, I, I was taken aback. I, I was pretty surprised that someone said you're just a radio show, <laughs> and I, I wasn't offended. And what that showed me though is is that a lot of people don't understand the extent. Uh, and the reach uh, of the work that I'm doing 
personally uh, here, uh, not only on Revolution Radio, but on, on social networks, on the Global Illumination Council platform, on YouTube, on live stream. Uh, we have a pretty far reach. Um, according to our Google Analytics, we're reaching almost 2 million people a month. And that includes, uh, of course, that includes Revolution Radio. I don't know the stats of Revolution Radio, but uh for YouTube, uh, social networks, and the Global Illumination Council webpage, we're reaching almost 2 million people a month with our, our posts, with our videos, with our radio shows, uh, archives, and whatnot. Um, so I figure this would be a good opportunity to share with everybody a little bit of what you don't hear about here on the radio show. And um, let me start off with uh, the partic- with our platform. We have a social networking platform. Uh, yes, we do charge a membership fee. Oh my gosh, they charge them five bucks a month. Yes, we do. Uh, it costs money to run. It costs money to to pay for the internet. It costs money for the platform. It costs money for for internet. It costs money for electricity. It's not free. Life is not free. So we do have to charge a very small uh, fee. However, uh, the, the social platform uh, does offer the ability to create your own web page. It creates the ability to start your own blog, your own video library. We have over, geez, we've got to have way over 100,000 pages of information. Uh, yes, 100,000 pages, if way, probably way more than that are available. If you just put in a topic and search the website, you're going to find what you're looking for in reference to, a, well, as, as a reference site. Uh, everything from the NWO to the Illuminati to chemtrails to to the GMOs to consciousness to meditation classes, all of these things. We're constantly doing educational series on YouTube. Uh, one of our most popular series, uh, uh, which I find uh, very interesting, is called the Light Workers. I thought we kind of uh, that that term got a little played out during uh, uh, before 2012, but yet yeah, it's still very very popular with people. Um, as far as joining uh, the B, the GIC, we 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 don't consider people that sign up just signing up. We we consider you members of our organization, of our community, contributing members, uh, members that want to interact and get to know one another. And we do have one thing we ask everyone to do, and that's to sign a pledge. And I want to share that pledge with you today because I don't think I don't think I've ever shared it on the radio. But our pledge states that we, the undersigned, have pledged to respect and defend any individual's human, spiritual, employment, medical, housing, business, voting, educational, legal, economic, food, and sustenance rights, including the right to a healthy and thriving planet, the well-being of all wild and domesticated animals, plants, and insects, our natural resources, and the general well-being of all aspects of our universe. We will act in kindness to all humans and all life itself. We will not acknowledge, give credence to, endorse, participate, or do commerce with those who perpetuate through action, word, or deed an obvious agenda contrary to what is stated above, including obvious sentiments of racism, greed, betrayal, injustice, or intolerance toward another individual's rights. We acknowledge we are the future and take full responsibility for laying out the foundation for empowered future generations. That is the uh, GIC pledge, the members pledge that everyone has to agree to before we actually allow them access to the to the um, to the website uh, features. <clears throat> now, anybody can see our website. I don't know if anybody knows this. You can see our website. Anybody can go to any page. It's completely free. Uh, you don't need to be a member to, to, to see the website and to go to the website, but you need to be a member in order to post and to comment and to upload videos and all that stuff, uh, to have your own web page and, and whatnot. Um, uh, it's What's I, I always say it's funny. It's not funny. It's it's a wow. It's a wow because I wrote that pledge probably back in 2006, 2007. We posted it as a petition to the United Nations. <laughs> uh, gosh, way back in the MySpace days. I don't know if everybody remembers MySpace. Uh, yeah, it's still there. I don't know what it's doing, but uh, I remember that the pledge got so much... Um, uh, I'm sorry, the petition, uh, as written, 
uh, got so much uh, visibility and so many people signing it. I was like, you know what? Let's turn it. The UN's not going to do anything with this. We're not going to really. And who really wants the UN to do anything with it anyway? We need to do this within ourselves. And uh, when we began uh, the whole entire GIC organization slash community, it was the first thing that popped into my mind as, okay, you know, I want to know that people are serious. I want to know that people that join this group, that join this community, are serious about what we're all striving for. What are we striving for? I think the pledge pretty much encompasses all of it. Uh, it now, granted, uh, we have a lot of spiritual folk on there, including myself. Uh, we have a lot of people that are yoga teachers and meditation teachers and, and uh, Tai Chi type people and law of attraction type people and people that channel aliens and whatnot. But the reality of it is, is that we're all seeking the same thing. We are all seeking to live in a, in a, in a world where everyone counts, where everyone is treated with respect, with kindness, where everyone is is aware of where where the resources are coming from and what is being done to the natural resources. So with that being said, um, you know, that was the motivating factor of using this as a, um, as a, uh, how shall we say, for lack of a better term, a requirement for membership. Uh, I remember in the very beginning, it's funny, and, and I don't share this often, but uh, I remember when we first started back in 2006, and now granted, uh, back in 2006, we were a small little radio show. Actually, we were a Skype cast. I don't know if anybody remembers Skype cast. We had a Skype cast when you used to be able to use Skype as a radio station, and uh, it was called EKB TV Skype cast. And, uh, Anyway, the EKB TV, I'm not going to go into the whole thing, but it it, in the end, it stood for Earth Knowledge Broadcasting Television because our initial thing was our live stream channel and our YouTube channel and the radio uh, broadcast, of course. <clears throat> but I remember when we first started, uh, we used to get uh, a lot of slack from uh, from anonymous anonymous used to say what are you scientologists or you know they didn't quite uh they didn't quite understand where we were coming from and uh through the years it's funny uh in a good way in a very good way uh that uh, you know i feel that uh, the gic has not only proven its integrity of what we stand for and what we're doing uh, we're, we're very, you know, I feel that's probably one of the main reasons why we're always uh, in a state of, of budget f flux, you know, up and down, because we won't sell out. Uh, I've turned down, uh, I've turned down Google from wanting to buy the network from me. I was like, no, 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 you're not going to turn me into YouTube, you know, and take it all away and turn it into this commercial site. Yeah. We have allowed ads on our videos, of course. You know, we, we need we need the uh, the revenue, what little it is. But uh, the reality of it is, is that uh, over the years, I was just gonna, I was just referring back to Anonymous, that uh, they they really like us and and they really become uh, they've worked with us. Uh, they are the ones who sent me the links yesterday uh, to the live streams to let me know what was happening. Still, they know that we are a network to be reckoned with, that we do get reach uh, a million more people a month. And uh, it's such a uh, – and granted, I, I'll say it right now. I am not a member of Anonymous. I don't know anything about the computer. I'm not really good at it. I'm, I'm fairly – that's why we have to rent a platform. You know, we pay for a platform. I didn't, I didn't write the code. I pay for, you know, using the code. <laughs> but um, – I'm, I'm grateful that uh, it, people, movements, movements such as Anonymous and movements such as Occupy, movements, even at the Tea Party in the beginning before they went crazy, uh, we used to work with quite a bit as well. Uh, but again, it's all the same focus. It's all the same focus of, of our individual human rights as, our, uh, as is our right to be kind to one another. Um, we have, a, I have a very, very no nonsense attitude and I'm, you can probably hear it in my voice. I don't tolerate a lot of ridiculousness. Um, 
if uh, if things get a little hazy, hazy, crazy on on my on my pages, I'm like, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm blocking you. You're just being cool. You're just being mean. Someone someone was saying something in support yesterday uh, to the work that we were doing, but the way that they said it. Uh, was just so nasty to the people that were commenting. There was a thread. All right, I'm going to give you an example. And I know many of us have our Facebook pages with threads, you know, and discussions going on. Uh, there was a thread discussing the the Brazilian uprising, and uh, I had posted a, a posed a question to to the page saying, uh, "Well, Brazil had ha- has had their last straw that broke the camel's back. What is it going to take for American?" People, you know, what's going to be the last straw for America, for us to finally get up, for Americans to finally stand up? And there was this very long, very, very long uh, thread going on. Uh, A lot of it was kind of negative, mostly from people from other countries, you know, saying, oh, start charging for football or uh, cheeseburger shortage. You know, (laughs) a lot of it was very tongue in cheek. And apparently someone, I guess uh, I'm assuming they're American, got very offended and said, you know, F you, who, do you, who the heck do you think you are? And I'm, I'm, I'm censoring myself and censoring the comment. You know, we do a lot. We, we're working toward this. It'll be the Keystone XL pipeline and la, 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 la. And um, because of the, uh, the tone that was used, the, uh, the, we have a, a, a no obscenity uh, setting. So I kind of blocked it. And I left it. Unblo- I left it blocked. Normally, I'll unblock it if it just says the f word. I'm like, yeah, whatever, big deal. They said the f word, but it was the way that they were responding to the group. We, uh, I agree, we need to debate. I agree, we need to have uh, public discourses on certain topics. I do, but yelling at each other is not going to get anything done. That's the same thing they do in Congress, you know, putting them down, using the same methods of ridicule. Or, or nasty behavior is not going to get the point across. Um, I say it all the time. You know, God bless Alex Jones. He's done a lot of great work. But you know what? His yelling and screaming is not going to attract the masses that we need. And I firmly believe it's in having a responsible and mature discussion about the issues versus having this, you know, this outrageous, you know, cursing back and forth at each other. You're a sheeple. You're, you're an idiot, you know, offending other races, offending other countries and whatnot is not what's going to get us all on the same page. Um, we can agree to disagree. We can agree to have a very heated, heated discussion. I have them all the time, but they're done with respect. They're done with respect for the under, other individuals uh, not only their feelings, but for the other individual's responsibility to their own actions of, okay, this person really feels this for a, cer- a certain reason. Why do they feel this way? Um, granted, I will say, quite honestly, if, if there's just no making headway, I just don't bother discussing anything with that particular person. It's like, all right. You know, they're a Republican that's going to vote for whoever's running or they're a Democrat that's going to vote for whoever's running Democrat. You can't you can't have a discussion with people that are that stubborn. You can't. And you're just wasting your energy. And again, that's going back to the respect of yourself. Um, So, again, you know, I brought this up because of the fact that we added that term. Uh, We amended our pledge just this last year to include the term. We will act in kindness to all humans and all life itself. You know, if we're going to make a better world, we cannot behave the way the elites do. We cannot reciprocate in the way that the elites do. And the elites know nothing but ridicule, hate, war, murder, uh, corruption. That's not the way to, of the future. If you want change, you've got to stop doing what's the norm and what's the accepted norm. Uh, uh, in America, there's the argument. I, I love this. And it has to do with the mentality of the individual and what we're being taught. Uh, someone said – we had a discussion uh, several nights ago. I was at a function, and uh, we were having a discussion on gun control and you know the whole violence thing. And somebody brought up, it's not about the guns. It's about the violence. And I couldn't agree more. It's about the violence. And it, it's not – the games it's not the music it's not the guns i don't know what it is i really don't know what it is 
but we have members uh, at GIC that are in Europe and, and Africa and Asia and South America. They play the violent games. They play, you know, they play the death metal. They're not out shooting each other in those countries. I, I don't get it. I don't understand what it is here that we're so prone to, to, to these random acts of violence. Now, yeah, I know. I know many of them are false flag. I know many of them uh, could possibly be um, – um, oh, geez, what was that thing that Aaron McCollum was a part of? Uh, the MK Ultra. The MK Ultra type, you know, brain control type thing. I understand that, and I agree that I agree with that to uh, to a certain degree. Of course, uh, I know many of the uh, the media sensationalized um, events that take place are probably staged and probably MK Ultra type uh, brain control, mind control. However, there is a certain uh, undertone of violence, acceptable violence. Now, again, why is it that countries like, let's say, Sweden or, or Norway, you know, they have their death metal and they have their uh, War of the World PS2 games. Or I don't play video games, so I really don't know what's out there right now. But, you know, th- you know they're blowing up people and whatnot, but they're not doing it in real life. What makes America so different? I don't get it. So th- there's a question to, to our listening audience. What is- Hi. I have a comment about that actually. <laughs> Trevor, go on. Um, well, these are just my thoughts huh? about it. It's like my thoughts about it is that the mainstream media it depends what outlet of the mainstream media I'm talking about is. Well, the mainstream media seems to have successfully quarantined like North America, like from the rest of the world. Like, like from knowing anything about like like the world's revolution to going all the way to how other countries like do things because I, it seems to me that north america is is bombarded with the glorification of war and violence and hate especially hatred towards people who preach the word of, 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 I guess, for lack of a better term, peace and love. So this is why this, uh, so that's why I believe that all that, all this kind of behavior is accepted in North America because we're so, because everybody in North America is so bombarded by all this, the glorification of all this like lower vibrational stuff. Right. Well, that's a great observation, and uh, you have a very good point. And a good example of that is, uh, God, what was that? About six months ago, a year ago, the the Time magazine covers. Uh, what was it? The Person of the Year or something like that. And uh, on one of them, it's uh, the Occupy demonstrator. Oh, the protester is like the Person of the Year, and then the other one is like uh, I forgot who it was, like an Obama or something like that. And it's like we get different media than the rest of the world you're right there is a certain um barrier as far as uh, what the corporate media allows americans to see and read i mean talk about propaganda talk about censorship uh but to bring it back to what i was asking and to what we're talking about i can see where that would uh make some sense uh in the sense of that our media is it's very manipulative very manipulative and I can see where maybe subconsciously it is uh, creating a more violent, uh, you know, this is America mentality or this is North America. And, uh, and we're very sorry, by the way, uh, that Canada got yanked into this. <laughs> we used to flee to Canada. Well, now, unfortunately, Canada seems to be getting the same stuff we're getting. But uh, <laughs> so I apologize on behalf of Americans for that. We didn't mean to drag you into our mess. But uh, <laughs> Canada's been in the mess since the beginning. It's just it's taken a lot longer to actually show its ugly face up here so <laughs> yeah yeah no it's true i understand completely uh you know and uh it, well i can go into the whole thing about uh you know the tentacles of uh of the royal family and the fake revolutionary war and uh i'm not going to go into conspiracy theories right now maybe later but uh I, yeah it, it seems to be that uh, america seems to be like a petri dish 
uh, for media manipulation and propaganda and uh, subliminal uh, programming. Who knows? I mean, yeah, we have to realize that a lot of these other countries don't have media the way that we do. We have it everywhere, billboards. Uh, and now we have, uh, you know, um, flash, uh, flash bus bus terminals. You know, where and look at look at Times Square. That's like the biggest media whore center of the world you know there's these giant what do they call them jumbotron screens and whatnot we're getting them on bus bus benches now though i mean that that's pretty bad what was the name of that movie with tom cruise i i I always forget where you know it's like you're he's walking through the hall and they're like it recognizes him and it's trying to advertise to him which is what's happening here uh it's a futuristic one oh jeez Anyway, I'm sure everybody knows which one I'm talking about. Minority Report. Right. So that's the Report. only one I could think of. That's it. That's the one. And we're, it seems that we're being headed, we're headed in that direction as far as the media is concerned. And, uh, you know, we're seeing more and more examples of it. Uh, if, if, you know, God forbid, and, you know, they're going to try to do it, either a chip or the tattoo or something. You know, you're going to be walking down the street and something's going to scan you. And it's going to be like, oh, hi, Trevor. I know you like to have, uh, you know, I don't know, a certain type of milk. Here's that milk, you know. <laughs> it's it's, uh, it's ridiculous. It's really, really, really ridiculous. But again, you know, going back to the whole, um, uh, well, let me actually, let me go a little bit further. Let me take it a little bit further uh, with the whole gun control debate. Um, first of all, let me just say I, I don't own guns. I never owned a gun. I don't like guns. I don't want to be around guns. But that's my personal choice. Uh, if you have a gun, I'm not going to hold it against you. You know, don't don't go around killing people. I don't care what you do. The reality of it is, is that it is a constitutional right, and I stand up for humanity. I am not a leftist. I am not a rightist. I am I'm not a libertarian. I'm not a green. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I, I'm Bernard, I think for myself. And as someone who thinks for themselves, when we're seeing the way, and for me, it's not even about gun ownership. It's about the way the media is manipulating people, manipulating us, creating divisiveness, creating angst between family members, between friends. Uh, you know, it's the same game over and over again. Divide and control. Divide and control. Uh, what, what's uh, the old saying? The Hegelian dialect, I believe, is is what we talk about a lot. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the same thing, and if I'm wrong, forgive me. But it just popped into my head. It's the fact that in order for us to be controlled, we have to be divided, and it really aggravates me. When I see not only the media manipulating people, but people that I love and care about falling for it drives me nuts. People that I love and respect falling for the same old freaking dog and pony show, whether it be gun control, whether it be abortion, whether it be gay marriage rights, whether it be racism or women's rights or really, really? You haven't seen them play this in the last 30 elections. You haven't seen the media re-spin this over and over and over again. You're going to fall for that whole gun control thing (laughs) and get pissed off at your friends when they think that people have the right to do whatever they want as long as they don't hurt nobody. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. And, And it makes me so sad because it reminds me of how much work we still have to do. We've got a lot of work ahead of us, and we need everyone on board with this movement of humanity. Let's call it the human movement. I don't care what you want to call it. It is a movement toward humanity, freedom. Doing, I firmly believe, do what you want. Harm nobody. You're not harming anybody. You can do whatever you want. I don't care if you're... Oh, I don't know. Decide to shave your body and walk around with purple ink all over you. If that's what you're into, go for it. You know, you're not hurting anybody. You know, if you're if you're if you want to marry three people, go for it. 
that that you're not hurting anybody. Who are we to say what is right and wrong for one another? But the reality of it is, is that it's the harm, it's the destruction, it's the death, it's the ridicule, it's the emotional abuse, it's the economic abuse, it is the divisiveness that is holding us back. It is not people that live on the friends, think on the friends, or act on the friends. It is the mainstream that is now the friends. The mainstream is the friends. And there we go. I'm going to coin it today. The mainstream is the friends. The mainstream doesn't get it. Does not get it. When I say mainstream, I mean media, corporate media, corporate news, corporate music, corporate movies. They don't get it. They're just they're doing the same thing over and over and over again. Bread and circuses. Bread and circuses. Bread and circuses. Bread and circuses. And you know what? They're doing it and they're getting away with it because people still keep falling for it. And we've got – there has to be a point where we just say no more. No more. I've had it. I've had it. We have to say to ourselves, I'm not going to play that game anymore. We all get pulled back into it. I know members of the Occupy movement that fell into it with uh, the whole Obama presidential election, which well, please don't get me started. But – Oh, but we need to support the Democrats. They're the good guys. No, they're not. <laughs> oh, we got to support the Republicans. They're the good guys. No, they're not. We got to support the par- Tea Party. No, they're not the good guys. The good guys let people do as they will without harming anybody and do not oppress another. Do not tell other people how to live, where to live, or or to put any type of oppression on them economically, medically, fundamentally i mean now i'm seeing that you need to have good credit to get a job you need to have good credit to open a bank account really so you just don't want anybody to participate in your in your new magical world order where everything is perfect apparently good we don't want it either (laughs) that's why i use credit unions but um You know, and yes, that was a plug for credit unions. Move your money. Stop supporting Bank of America. Stop supporting Wells Fargo. Somebody said to me uh, something about Wells Fargo, and I'm like, I don't support Wells Fargo. (laughs) Oh, it's the gym. I'm like, oh, I need to print. And now, back to your host, Bernard Alvarez. Welcome back to the Just Bernard Show. You're listening to me talk for the next uh, 30 minutes, actually. It's been a fun show, i got to tell you. Uh, but I've asked you guys if you want. You're more than welcome to uh, post any questions. But I guess you're just enjoying listening to me yap away. And I don't get to yap away very often. So this is, a, this is actually a real treat for me, and I appreciate it. So thanks for letting me do this, uh, everybody. And thanks for listening. Um, uh, talking uh, before the break, we were talking about the banks and whatnot. But let let me just say something that's been on my mind as well. Uh, God, it's great to have your own radio show. <laughs> I've got to tell you, I've I've been getting a lot of emails about uh, Turkey, about Brazil, uh, and and of course last year the whole Occupy thing. Uh, that it's a conspiracy. Uh, yeah, I am very aware of the conspiracy world. I, I, I think I'm very much a part of it. Uh, do I believe in uh, conspiracies? Of course I do. I'm not an idiot. But not everything is a conspiracy. Uh, and to say that the Brazilian uprising is a conspiracy is, is, is a real affront to the people of Brazil. And I got to put that out there right now. These are people that have chosen to stand up and talk, uh, to speak their mind, and they've had it. Now, was uh, the Occupy movement a conspiracy? Let's see. Uh, if I remember correctly, it was started by a Canadian magazine. <laughs> uh, thank you, Canada. Uh, Ad, Ad, Adbusters uh, started the event, and the event just continued uh, to evolve. And uh, now, granted, yeah, a lot of the Occupy groups uh, succumbed to Republican and or Democratic uh, 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 influence. Those are on individual uh, cases. However, the reality is is that not everything is a conspiracy. That's all I'm trying to say. That's all I'm trying to say. Uh, Yes, um, are there false flags? Of course there are false flags. Are there media hype? 
uh, events that happen to get everyone in an uproar. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Eric, uh, uh, the Snowden situation. Uh, again, everyone's calling him a fraud and whatnot. Uh, uh, there are two sides to it. You know, there, there seem to be people that say that Snowden isn't doing anything. Everybody already knew that this was going on with the NSA. Then we have the conspiracy people saying, oh, he's a fraud. He's just trying to get everybody in an up. This is my favorite conspiracy, that everyone is just going to rebel and give the New World Order an excuse to open up the FEMA camps. Is there any truth to that? Um, yeah, there is. I agree. I agree. I agree that if there were some type of a mass uprising uh, in the United States, that I, probably like everywhere else in the world, there would be um, violence. Well, we saw it with Occupy. We saw the police brutality. Uh, we saw the mass arrest for no reason. Um, would it happen if it was uh, on a on a very very national scale? Probably, and yeah, they're going to have to put them somewhere. So I guess that's where the FEMA camp aspect would come in. But to say that um, to say that any particular event is being used to generate that, you know, that's in front to me as someone who who feels change happening within them. That's 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 very very disrespectful to those of us who are very spiritually uh, connected to to ourselves and understanding that there is change happening, that we want to help the change, that we want to help people speak up, that we want to help people get to know what they're feeling and help them understand what is happening with the planet. And to say that they're just a part of a conspiracy is, is very, um, again, very disrespectful. Yes, there's a difference between conspiracy and tabloid. And we need to learn the difference between tabloid journalism and uh, investigative uh, journalism. And to me, uh, the, the investigative journalist is going to go and, and, and really uh, dig up the dirt, uh, show the corruption, show the conspiracy, and they're going to have facts back it up. Uh, now, that's not to say, let's, let's talk about this. Everyone says, well, if it's all about the facts, how can we say – that there is a spiritual revolution going on, that people are just waking up, you know, spontaneously. How is there any fact in that? Well, there's a difference. There's a big difference. And for me, it's just a matter of how you're perceiving uh, this uh, revolution. You know, uh, we'll, we'll call it revolution for lack of a better term. We're on revolution radio, and there's a lot of that going around the world right now. So for lack of a better term, we'll call it a revolution. But that revolution happens on different stages, different levels, and it all depends on your perception. Yes, there is a revolution of consciousness going on. And many of us, and if you look at many of the demonstrators, it's a younger crowd. And, and God bless it. You know, I, if I was 20 years younger, I would be out there, you know, camping and, and protesting. And I, heck, I was, but uh, I was lucky enough to be at an Occupy where we went home at night. However, uh, the whole idea of, 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 of that whole outrage, you know, I, I feel that it depends on where you are in your life. What stage are you at? <clears throat> I couldn't be happier. And I, and, and I think, Trevor, you and I were talking about this, that look at all the young people in Brazil. It was all young people. What a beautiful thing. What a beautiful thing that this is the next generation that sees through the lies, that understands the, the illusion that is being thrust upon them, and they're saying, I'm not going to have it. This is not the world that I'm going to spend the rest of my life in. This is not the world that I'm going to have kids in and try to build a life for myself. We're not going to take it. I think it's wonderful. We absolutely have to agree with that. On the same, on the same aspect, we also have to realize that there is a certain, with those that might be a little bit older, um, are having a bit of a consciousness awakening as well. Uh, many of the many of our listeners, I mean, are, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, the GIC audience is thirty-five to fifty-five. That's our main audience, and uh, the older people, they may not be out there in the streets. They may not be. Uh, doing the protesting, they may not be out there doing the uh, you know the light brigades and all that stuff, 
but there is a an internal awakening happening, a shift in the way that they're looking at the world. You know, we talk about not being able to teach an old dog new tricks. Well, let me tell you something. The, the Gen X and the baby boomer uh, generation seems to be having this aha moment of, you know, gosh, you know, I, I think that, that stuff is over. You know, that whole two-party paradigm is over. You know, let's uh, let's move on to something better. So we have to understand that and respect that, respect that, that people are changing and because someone changes their mind or because someone produces or promotes a certain specific type of information doesn't make it a conspiracy, not always. Uh, so the conspiracy is a conspiracy, if you ask me, <laughs> to a certain extent, to a certain extent. Uh, I feel like it, it opens us up for a lot of disinformation. So we have to be very careful. Um, discernment is a very important wor word. Discernment. Let's discern the information before we jump on the bandwagon. Uh, the gentleman who posted about the Brazilian uprising being a conspiracy couldn't have been more than you know 19, 20 years old. And it was like, okay, must have heard that from Alex Jones or somebody on a you know Republican radio station or something. I don't, I don't know. But uh, I remember when uh, when Occupy started, they started that. And I was like, you know, you're just repeating what the guy said on Fox News. All you're doing is repeating what you heard. You're not discerning the information. We need to discern the information before we jump on a particular bandwagon. And for that matter, let's not jump on any bandwagon. There should be one bandwagon. And that bandwagon should be humanity, equality, justice, Freedom, support, love, unconditional love, unconditional support. Hold up your brother, hold up your sister, and take care of each other. That should be the bandwagon. The bandwagon is not about WikiLeaks. The bandwagon is not about no disclosure. The bandwagon is not about conspiracy. The bandwagon is humanity. Let's focus on that. Let's focus on freeing humanity from this crazy paradigm. I mean, what kind of a paradigm did they think they were creating these these uh, control freaks, for lack of a better term? It's a psychopathic paradigm of, of consume, 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 consume. And, and God, I'm probably going to piss off somebody now. Well, whatever. I probably already pissed off 100 people. The reality of it is, is that this whole idea that um, if you want to talk about a conspiracy within a conspiracy, I can't help but notice that. Many of the conspiracy sites out there uh, focus on gold and silver, gold and silver, gold and silver. Well, let's ask, ask yourself this and follow the money trail. Follow the money trail. Who comes up with the prices of gold and silver? Who? Isn't it the Wall Street speculators? Isn't it the IMF or you know the, those that are in control of the the economic market, how are we changing the world by getting rid of our cash and investing in gold? Someone's going to get rich. Someone's going to get rich, and it's not going to be you, trust me. So let's think about that. And this is only an example. And the reason why I said this and I bring it up is, uh, again, you know, a lot of these conspiracies, I'm grateful to Revolution Radio. We're not a commercial site. We're not influenced by our... our, our um, by our advertisers you know we have an integrity same thing at the global illumination council i'm not i'm not swayed by an advertiser or a sponsor or you know anything like that you know granted you know there are moments where i'm like oh well you know maybe i should listen to them they were right about that you know that doesn't sound good you know i did have a, a moment like that about a year ago or about six months ago where i was like you know what they spoke up i'm glad they spoke up let me change it However, it's not about, I'm going to cut off funding if you don't you know, promote me. And um, there's something to be said about the freedom of Revolution Radio and of the GIC not to have that type of influence. Uh, so look at these sites. What are they advertising? Are they advertising gold and silver? Move all your money. Why? Why? You know, if anything, I say go for the credit union. You have a vote. Do you know that credit unions have annual meetings? where you dictate the policy of that particular credit union, you vote. You have a vote. You count. Do you have a count on the price of gold? Do you have a count on, on – uh, do you have a say on the price of silver? No, of course not. 
And if we are going to transcend the present economic paradigm, isn't that just perpetuating the same thing, just changing the currency? It's still dollars. It's still worth. It's still uh, the global economic market. That's not changing anything. Um, and, you know, this is a great place. Uh, we have to start wrapping up. I can't believe this went by so quickly. But if we're going to change the world, all right, uh, here we go. I'm going to try to wrap it up, and I'm going to make the world a better place in 10 minutes. Not kidding. But the economy is something that we need to think about. The way that we carry ourselves in the economy, is this the paradigm we're stuck with right now? Yeah, of course it is. Uh, I've said, I said this about 20 years ago, and I'll never forget it. Somebody asked me, and I was teaching a class, or doing a speech, some public speaking thing, and somebody was like, well, what do we do to get our power back? And the first thing I said was, don't give them your money. Don't give them your money. Stop giving Walmart your money. Stop giving BP oil your money. Stop giving you know these companies that are destroying the planet, McDonald's, uh, Nestle, uh, Monsanto. Stop giving them your money. They feed – the more money you give them, the more power they have in this present paradigm. So be aware of how you're spending your money. Follow the money trail. Follow the money trail. I had no idea that that innocent little Nestle crisp bar that I used to buy funded this an international cartel of you know economic and psychopathic people of running the planet, con- trying to control water, trying to control natural resources. I had no idea. Uh, uh, one of the big arguments we had, uh, what was it, about almost a year ago now, that whole Chick-fil-A crap. Oh, well, first of all, Chick-fil-A is disgusting. It's all GMO mess. And they fund those crazy camps. They fund the, those, those camps where they put gay guys in and, and, and torture them until they say they're straight. I mean, really? You want to give them your money? Not only are you, are you, are you, are you, are you funding psychological abuse, you're funding GMO. You're funding gen- genetically modified food in the market. So follow the money. Find out where the money is going. Who owns that company? And guess what? That's only a division. So who owns that division of that company? And where is that money going? Who's, who's running it? Who's running the show behind the curtain? Um, this is a very, very, um, a very easy thing to do. I mean, we're living in the age of, of the Internet. We're living in the age of technology. Uh, I, gee, I, a good example. You're going to laugh at this one, actually. This is a personal one that happened to me last week. Um, I was out. You know, I, I, I like to do the occasional shot of vodka or something like that, okay? So I went and bought a bottle of vodka last week, and um, it was what was and – and I'll say the brand name here, Wolf Schmidt. And I was like, oh, look, Wolf Schmidt's on sale. I'm like, all right, I'll give it a try. You know, la la la. I read the reviews. Uh, in the past, I had read reviews. It was like a college dorm review of like, okay, if you're going to buy cheap vodka, this is your best vodka. Well, I ended up buying it and it tasted like crap. It was disgusting. I've never had a more disgusting tasting vodka in my entire life. So I, I'm reading the label and it says, Vodka with liqueur. I'm like, with liqueur? They put liqueur in it. It's no wonder. It's not, it's not vodka. So I was, and I'm looking, and I'm like, where is the, I want to, I want to learn more about this. I went on the internet. I'm like trying to find it, it uh, on the bottle. It doesn't say where it's from. So three or four or five clicks later, I find out who the distributor is. It's a uh, Jim Beam bought it apparently from the Russians. It was a, a really, it was a Russian vodka that was produced in America, and then Jim Beam bought it and added and turned it into a liqueur. Um, everyone's like, why the hell is he talking about vodka? <laughs> so the reason why is I'm trying to prove a point that it's very easy to find out who owns what. It may not say it on the bottle. It may not say it on the box. It may not say it on the canister of whatever it is that you're buying, but it, a very simple internet search will help you to see who is running the show, who's pulling the strings behind the curtain. Find out who they are. Find out why they're selling it. Uh, good example, uh, and I haven't done much research into it, but maybe now I will that I'm bringing it up, is uh, PAM and dimethicone silicone. 
why the heck is there dimethicone silicone in olive oil pan? I thought it was just olive oil in a spray. Well, of course not. It's got plastics and all this other stuff. I wanted to find out. I, I need to find out who owns Pam. So if anybody's listening, find out and, and see why they would do something as horrible as that. I will never touch stuff. I, I've never used it in the past. But, you know, we all think we're doing ourselves a favor. You know, olive oil is better for you, whatnot. But, um, you know, this is something to look into. Are they affiliated with a company that uses this stuff and they can get it real cheap? Um, so, again, your power right now, right now, your power is in the way that you think and who you support. Your power is in your discernment and in your money. No matter how little money you have, where you're spending that money, your discernment will help clarify what's going on with you, what's going on in the world. Being discern, Having discernment will make sure you're not falling for media hype. And by all means, by all means, I think the most important thing that we can do is to learn how to talk nice to ourselves. That inner dialogue, I'll cover it again, the inner dialogue. How are you speaking to yourself? Because how you're speaking to yourself eventually, if it isn't already, is going to reflect how you speak to other people. And I don't care how bad it's... Listen, I had a rough youth. I, I was a rough kid. I was, I was a tough little cookie back in the day and got into a lot of trouble and I've it was a learned behavior to be kind. It was a learned behavior to be gentle. It was a learned behavior to be compassionate. And it, actually, the reality of it is, it wasn't even a learned behavior. It was an aligning with my higher spirituality, an aligning with my true nature, and allowing that to come out is when it became easy to talk nice to myself, to talk nice to other people, to have compassion for other people, to have understanding and empathy for other people. Support of humanity comes with spiritual alignment. I can't say it more. I can't say it enough times. I can't. Learning to trust yourself comes with understanding your your place here on the planet, why you're here, knowing that you're more than just this name, knowing that you're more than just this body, knowing that sometimes the things you feel are more important than some of the things that you're seeing, knowing that you can be manipulated externally. But that the, the truth is always going to be inside of you and learning to trust that truth inside of you and acting positively on it is what's going to help our planet. We must learn to have a positive inner dialogue. We must learn to nurture ourselves emotionally, to nurture each other emotionally, and to have a positive dialogue with each other on every level of this. We are going through a transition. The world is going through an upheaval. And I've said it before, many of us, most of us listening to this show are midwives to this transition. It's going to be painful. It's going to be painful. But we need to help birth this new reality. We need to birth this new understanding, this new consciousness that is inevitable. We can't, you can't stop. They always say you can't stop progress. Except their progress means uh, cutting down the rainforest and building McDonald's grazing yards for. And actually, I see some unposted Conagra. That's one of the ones that create the grazing yards. Uh, yes, Pam is a Conagra product. I'm seeing right now, everyone. Thank you for sharing that, Grazer's Edge. Um, the reality of it is, is that progress is not about building a new strip mall. Progress is about the the elevation of humanity to a new understanding, a new cooperation, a new way of living with each other, a new way of living on the planet. And that will be done through compassion. That will be done through discernment. That will be done through awareness. And that will be done in a way that is not going to correspond with the way that we have been taught these last 100,000 years, whatever you want to call it. It's been, it's been a, a bit of a... Uh, it's been a bit of a ride, and the ride is done. <laughs> Time to get off the ride, switch gears, move into the other ride, and that other ride is going to include a better inner dialogue and a better dialogue with one another. So by all means, everyone, I, I hope I hope you've enjoyed the show. I know I'm rambling now at this point. Maybe I'm not. But the reality of it is, is that uh, this has been a great show for me. 
uh, I feel that uh, we've covered a lot of topics today, and I hope I've given you some food for thought to think about, whether to agree with or to disagree with or to talk to your friends about or to write nasty comments on my YouTube channel later when we post this, but um, or, or positive comments for that matter. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, please remember, you can find me uh, at thegic.org. Uh, if, you, if you do uh, go to gic.org, Everyone's got a profile, so of course the GIC.org has to have its own profile. That would be me if you need to get a hold of me. We also have contact uh, tabs over there as well. Uh, there's always an event going on. There's always something happening, so come on over and say hi. We're also on Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash Global Illumination Council. And of course, you can find me here every Tuesday at noon uh, here on freedomslips.com on Studio A. I think I'm on Studio A right now. And uh, we're here on Revolution Radio every Tuesday. Next week, I've got a really great guest. Wow, I got to tell you about her. Let me see. I got to find the information. Give me one second here as I pull it up. Uh, we have Anodia Judith. Now, uh, I I was introduced uh, to Anodia Judith's work uh, just a little bit over two months ago, and she's been around for quite a while. I'm very very impressed with her body of work, and I'm looking forward uh, to having her on the show. She's going to join us for the full two hours next week. Uh, she is the author, uh, her, I believe her latest, I don't know if it's her latest book, but it's called The Global Heart Awakens. And um, again, it's pretty much about what we always talk about on this show. Uh, but Anodia Judith, is uh, she's, uh, she has a doctorate, a PhD, of course. She's an innovative thinker, best-selling author, teacher, uh, therapist, uh, she has degrees in psychology, human health, lifelong studies in mythology, sociology, mystical spirituality. She's been teaching uh, for years. She's written tons of books. I mean tons of books with over a million, a million books in print in 15 languages. This is going to be a very, very, uh, a very big honor for us, and I'm looking forward to having her come on uh, and speak to us next week. Uh, she will be joining us for the full two hours as well. I don't know if you've seen it, but uh, we do have – uh, the Just Bernard TV. It's a sister show to this radio show. Uh, it's only a 20 minute long uh, show, but we will be doing uh, live video interviews as well. And if I'm not mistaken, I am not mistaken, we have Lee Camp uh, next month. Uh, we haven't set up a date yet, but he has contacted me and he will be joining me for a video interview next month sometime. Uh, as well, we do put out the Just Bernard TV every Saturday. So make sure you check it out on our YouTube channel. Anyway, I got to wrap things up. I want to thank you all for joining us. Thank you so much, Trevor, as usual, for everything. And thank you to all of our listeners to Revolution Radio and in the chat. I want to wish you all a wonderful, wonderful week. We'll see you next time. Have a great week, everyone. And uh, don't forget, you can find us on the DIC.org. There is no denying the world is awakening. We see it in the global uprisings and demonstrations of the people around the planet and the new way of thinking and living that is arising naturally within each one of us and our communities. I have been a major player in this global shift and movement for over 20 years and have helped tens of thousands of people around the world change their lives and find their voice in order to help create the paradigm change we so desperately need. Join me here at Revolution Radio on the Just Bernard Show every Tuesday at noon Eastern Eastern time for two hours of powerful interviews and discussion with some of the most influential visionaries of consciousness, alternative media, and suppressed knowledge. We promise to reveal the real matrix and empower your human experience.